Hi, my name is Stuart Byers and I'm a senior here at FIU University. The purpose of this video log is to explain some of the work I've done this semester in my community writing course. Each of us was given a prompt to write about a community in particular. Some chose to write about communities that have garnered much attention in media spotlight, such as the Me Too movement or Black Lives Matter. I instead chose a different direction altogether and chose a community seemingly archaic and barely notable, Shriners International. What initially attracted me to about Shriners was a deep curiosity about the organization itself, its ties to the reportedly nefarious cabal of Freemasons, the decline in fraternal organizations, how Shriners International intended on maintaining its relevancy, and just exactly what their purpose or role in society was. My late grandfather was a Shriner, and I think we have all seen their parades with the tiny cars, clowns, and fezzes. This was my only memory of his participation with the Shriners. Past that, I knew nothing. For my first major assignment, I related my findings about the Shriners community. The organization itself was founded when Billy Florence chose an Arabic theme to represent the new fraternal order he and 12 other Master Masons planned to organize as a more social and fun organization but still built on the tenets of compassion and charity of the Freemasons. By 1880, the Shriners are comprised of 7,200 members and 48 temples. In 1900, the Shriners have expanded to 55,000 members and 82 temples. The Shriners have a long and storied tale of charity and compassion for those earlier years before settling on a central mission of health care. In addition to their children's hospitals, the men get together for fellowship and recreation. Since the Shrine was founded as a respite from the staunch and dryly formal aspect of Mason Lodge meetings, members of Shriners International congregate for all manners of communion and frivolity. Their community, however, doesn't just revolve around fun, they also mentor each other in various ways, through both business and maintaining a healthy family life. The ethos of Shriners International is simple. They seek membership of men with good character and personal integrity, who are compassionate by giving back to their communities. Members are known for their loyalty, camaraderie, and compassion, and a steadfast drive to be leaders in their communities. They are committed to family and fellowship, and the principles governing character and brotherhood. For my second major writing assignment, I wrote about Shriners International from a more academic perspective, choosing scholarly or peer-reviewed articles to delve deeper in the history of Shriners International. The Shriners had a long and storied tale of charity and compassion from those earlier years, before settling on a central mission of health care. In 1905, the Shiners donated $25,000 to the city of San Francisco for earthquake relief. In 1915, the Shiners donated an extra $15,000 relief to European war victims. In 1919, Freeland Kendrick visits a Scottish Rite hospital for crippled children in Atlanta, Georgia. It's here that Kendrick finds his inspiration for what is to become the primary focus of the Shiners' philanthropic endeavors, the mission to help sick children in need. Their primary focus is helping children with severe burns congenital orthopedic maladies like clubfoot or brittle bone disease. All of this care is done with no cost to the families. For the second assignment, I was also tasked with interviewing actual members of the organization and got to pick their brains a bit about what being a Shriner meant to them. From each interviewee, I got this feeling of deep personal responsibility and commitment. They all had a great sense of character and integrity, and each had a genuine desire to be of service to their fellow man. They all seemed enriched by their personal involvement in this community, and their social ties were strong, many mentioning that the Shrine was like a second family to them. For my third major assignment, I made a proposition to modernize the fraternal order to make it more inclusive. The Shriners have a history of being rather exclusive in their vetting process, searching for individuals with strong moral fiber. And though they have two sister organizations for wives and daughters of Shriners, participation is excluded for women without this familial tie to the organization. I ventured that many single and wedded women might want the opportunity for philanthropy and fellowship that Shriners International has to offer. However, for this scheme to work, we would first require a profound interest from the general project, as well as a strict adherence to the ethos and guidelines that makes this organization so unique. Aside from reporting on our chosen community, we had weekly video and reading assignments to summarize and reflect upon. Many challenge us to change our perceptions on a certain topic, or to perhaps consider the topic from a different perspective. Many were rather informational. Some were incredibly dark. Though some focus on the building and maintenance of community, most regard the politics of gender, race, and sexuality. 
talk about the politics of how all these individuals should consider each other or get along, when most of the evidence points to the collective getting along just fine. I would perhaps wager that the folks needing this advanced level of coaching probably are never going to venture into the hollowed halls of academia, but that notion is probably elitist at best. And to genuinely reflect, it's probably best that we were having some of these conversations, because it seemed that none chose to even argue the notions put before them. It would seem that most prefer to look at these arguments from a surface perspective, and never question anything, instead opting for a conformity, or a display of shirt sleeve morality. I haven't fully figured if this was the decided path for acceptance, and parroting of what they believed they wanted the professor to hear, or if this current generation is just farther from the skeptical perspective than the Gen X I grew up in. Perhaps my sardonic attitude comes from age and experience, perhaps a combination of all three. It was actually enjoyable getting to know about the Shriners and their community, and a welcome contrast to the darker elements of community witnessed throughout this semester. After this pandemic, I feel like perhaps we need to focus more on the positive and healing. It would seem that cancel culture and social virtue signaling only seeks to deepen our divides and to destroy what so many before us sought to build. Though my pessimism is palpable, I actually have hope that humanity will eventually see itself through these difficult times, because from what I've witnessed so far, is that the human animal always arises to the challenges placed before it, and usually succeeds victorious.